Richard Herring. Again. Herring. Thank you. Thanks very much. To be or not to be. That is the first and only question on the University of Beekeeping entrance exam. <laughs> the answer's A, to B. <laughs> if you want to cheat. But, you know, you'll only be cheating yourself. The Sphinx was unusual amongst mythological creatures. It had a riddle. If you could solve the riddle, it wouldn't kill you. Little gout claws, nice gimmick. The other mythological creatures should have thought of that. No one could get it, it was impossible, but it was still nice that he had the get out course. Of course, Oedipus solved the riddle of the Sphinx. You may remember Oedipus. He's the bloke who so loved his mother, he killed his father and fucked her. <laughs> Most mums prefer it if you just help round the house a bit. Uh, <laughs> flowers on Mother's Day. But the, um, the riddle of the Sphinx was what walks on four legs in the morning, two legs in the afternoon and three legs in the evening. It's difficult. Oedipus said it was man because a baby on hands and knees, four legs, kind of four legs, hands and knees, doesn't count. Old man has a cane, that's, it's not really a leg, is it? Okay. It doesn't really work. But I've come up with the correct answer to the riddle of the Sphinx. What walks on four legs in the morning, two legs in the afternoon, three legs in the evening. It is, of course, Paul McCartney and his wife. <laughs> There's anything offensive about that. That's just mathematically correct. I'm making no... No judgment on that one. Um, Jerry Hall girls had some advice on, on how to keep your man, so that should be worth listening to, shouldn't it? <laughs> Jerry Hall's advice. Um, I can't wait. What she said, girls, to keep your man, all you have to do is act like a cook in the kitchen, a maid in the parlour, and a whore in the bedroom. Better advice, though, girls, if you want to keep your man, is to act like a whore in every room of the house. <laughs> Most men won't really care what state the parlour has got into. <laughs> as long as you're whoring it up <laughs> in the airing cupboard. Uh, <laughs> if you're in a long-term relationship, like you two have been to together for... It's important spice up your sex life to keep things interesting because if you know it can get very monotonous you learn each other's tricks you, yeah you have to keep things spiced up to avoid the, the monotony because it can it can become very tedious kind of the the same face gurning down at you the, <laughs> the same disgusting body bobbing up and down it can be <laughs> it can be nauseating can't it to be like, <laughs> occasionally you're, you're a little bit sick in the back of your throat aren't you it, you have to swallow the sick because it's considered rude to vomit during intercourse. So you're there looking at this disgusting sight, taste of vomit, and wanting to be. It's important to spice things up to avoid the nausea. I was in a long term relationship a few years ago. I was going through a bit of a sexual malaise, trying to spice things up. I said to my girlfriend, Why don't you bring your best friend to bed with us? Yeah. Three in a bed, yeah. Menage à toi. Yeah. Them lezzing up. <laughs> she said to me, you've got enough problem satisfying one woman at a time. <laughs> what makes you think you could cope with two? She thought that was clever girls, thought she got me there. <laughs> she was so wrong. I, I said, well, that is the entire beauty of the system. When I'm done, you two can finish each other off for me. <laughs> whilst I sleep. A woman knows what a woman wants and has the patience to see it through to its tedious conclusion. <laughs> she finished with me shortly after that conversation, so <laughs> now I'm reduced to having one in a bed sex. <laughs> Menage à un. <laughs> Which has worked out great for me because I forgot I really like to have sex with someone that I pity. It's uh, <laughs> the only way I can get off. Uh, <laughs> Is it who says potato anyway? Because <laughs> someone should tell them they're definitely pronouncing that wrong. There's no, there's no question about that. I don't think well, I'm not going to cause a fuss. Let's call the whole thing off. No, that is the incorrect pronunciation of that word. Well, if you let that.
that go? The person's going to go around thinking that's the correct pronunciation. A few years down the line, in a swanky restaurant with someone they want to impress, say to the snooty waiter, oh, does, does that come with potatoes? <laughs> He's going to laugh. The girl's going to think, I'm not going to marry him. He's an idiot. <laughs> you have to go up to him, get a potato, go, look, what do you call that, mate? <laughs> and he'll go, he'll go, that, that's easy, that is a potato. <laughs> go, no, mate, it isn't. You're the only person in the world who calls it that. It's a potato. You know, you're, you're, you're being different for different sake. There's no point. You can't just pronounce words how you want. That it will end in chaos. Where, where will it end? You say banana, I say banani. Uh, you say kumquat, I say pomegranate. You see what I mean? It's got a, It's a potato. The only person who would call that a potato is Inspector Clouseau. <laughs> Peter Sellers, Inspector Clouseau, the evil Steve Martin pissing on the grave of a genius. <laughs> Inspector Clouseau. What kind of arrogance or greed or stupidity could make a man think, you know what, yeah, I'll have a crack at Inspector Clouseau. No one's really nailed that part, yeah? <laughs> What a wank. I wish... Uh, the French don't say uh, potato, though. I, w- I wish they did. Um, what the French say for that is pomme de terre, which literally means apple of the ground. A potato and an apple are not similar. That is not an apple of the ground. Look, there's a difference. Look, there you go. Look, they're different. <laughs> they're, they're both food stuff. That's it. Look, uh, uh, a potato is, is brown. Uh, uh, an apple's usually green. Uh, a potato's a, a vegetable. An apple's a fruit. Uh, a raw apple tastes delicious. A raw potato tastes like a man's semen. <laughs> I imagine. <laughs> I've never eaten a raw potato. <laughs> so they come on, Apple, you must have, you know, to what around, he must have come back from the New World. Gone, look, everyone, look, French people, we found this new thing, there it is. Uh, everyone's calling it a potato. Uh, there's one bloke calling it a potato, we're just ignoring him. <laughs> Why don't you call it a potato as well? And the French go, no, 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 to this. This to us resembles nothing more than an apple. That if you hold that up to an apple there, it's like looking dans le mirror. Look at that. It's exactly the only difference we can see between this and an apple is the potato grows in the ground. The apple grows dans l'arbre, in the tree. I don't know, I only say certain phrases in French. The easiest ones is almost like I can't speak French. <laughs> So we're going to call it an apple of the ground, pomme de terre. You say potato, we say pomme de terre. Let's have a hundred years war. <laughs> I think we can satirise the French. We all have to do this, all the English-speaking world, everyone at home. Um, what we have to do in England is start referring to apples as potatoes of the sky. <laughs> Which actually is incorrect. It's quite a cool name. For, like, like, that is Sky Potatoes. That would liven Genesis up a bit, wouldn't it? Do you want a Sky Potato Eve? Yeah, of course I fucking do. It wouldn't that sound like something off of Star Trek? <laughs> the reason this would be a good satire of the French, though, if you, if you think about it, when a French boy is at school learning English, um, the teacher will go up and go, look, voici le pomme, mais en Angleterre on dit le pomme de terre de ciel. <laughs> The French boy will say in French, what, so in England, they call an apple an apple of the ground of the sky? <laughs> Ridiculous. And why would they do Why don't they just call it an apple? Why go through the rigmarole of going in that ground? Why don't they just call the French, the English language is stupid. The English are ridiculous. At which point I will burst into the classroom and go, no, little French boy, it is you who is stupid. <laughs> you and the entire French-speaking world for calling a potato an apple of the ground. It's not. You're wrong. <laughs> so, uh, thanks very much, it's been great. I'll just leave you with one for. Uh, do you know the best way to determine uh, the length of a man's penis? This is how it always works. I'm surprised this hasn't come out before. This is 100% guaranteed to work. The best way to determine the length of a man's penis is to get him to show it to you <laughs> and then measure it with the ruler. Always works. Uh, I don't have a great time, you have. <laughs>